Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are working on my own car, 2002 Mini Cooper R53. Uh, quite a few issues with it, but I think it's sort of related with the same, the same problem. Uh, let me put the ignition on here. You're gonna see the, the, the gauge sort of like going a little bit crazy. And then works. Uh, this second information display here doesn't work. Uh, if I put the light on, I have no uh, display light, so at night time is pretty much impossible to to see anything, speed and so on. If I start the car, as you can see, I have no RPM gauge, I have no information here about the temperature, nothing. Airbag is light is on at the minute I don't know if it's related what other problem uh, the central locking doesn't work either so if I lock the car so it locks this door the other door doesn't lock the boot also doesn't lock uh, if I unlock the car it works so let me let me do this manually here. So that's closed, locked. I'm gonna lock this one. So as you can see, the other one is down. Now I'm going to unlock the car. And you see it goes up. So to unlock, the central locking works. Yes, the boot never, never locks. What else? Uh, if I, if I put the lights on, like now, I can't remember if I should have some sort of indication there or just the illumination for, for the cluster is what tells me that the light is on. Uh, oh yeah, so fog light works, so there's indication light there. What else? All right, so one more thing that I just remembered. If you drive the car, obviously you got the, the miles here, uh, or the trip uh, display mileage. It counts correctly until you turn the car off. If you turn the car off and on again, it's always zeroed automatically. So that's another, that's another thing. But from that, uh, I can't remember of it, anything else. It was, it was quite a few problems, but the main problem is obviously this second information display here, the RPM and the illumination for, for the cluster because the night time is a, is a nightmare to drive. At night time, I've been driving this car. I've done quite a few trips recently. Uh, I went to see Mechanic Matt and also I went to, to the college. So I saw NAFs. I had to drive to the Midlands quite a few times and the night time is... You can't see much. I was looking at, basically, um, looking at the speed through a sat-nav or, or Google Maps. So that, because you can't see at night time, you can't see any display at all. Right, so there's, um, I put wire diagrams here and I already got the pings that I, I want to sort of check. So A15. Uh, 16 power, A1 ground, and then there's uh, something that I've noticed on the wire diagram, this X15 connector, which is a common connector to pretty much everything. And then there's another connector for the information display number two, which is this one. So you must have a connector from here to there, which I put here, no help, which I don't like to show wiring diagrams, but uh, if you look there, this is the information display number two and six wires and doesn't tell me nothing. Doesn't tell me what powers and grounds are. Uh, you probably have a current communication, which is so easy to identify because they're normally twisted together. But apart from that, I don't know where it should be, should have power or ground or 
you know, that's, that's the obstacles that we have with wiring diagrams. And I printed two wiring diagrams, but anyway, that's what I look at the wire diagrams I, I, I want to check right now. Powers and grounds and and see what happens. We might check check car lines, but this display not working is not gonna be a communication issue because it doesn't do nothing. So there's powers or grounds missing from that display. So I don't know if it's obviously a common problem with these cars are corrosion. I don't know if it's behind here, the connectors are corroded or some problem there. Another issue that you see in the minis on the le this R53, all the there's quite a few connectors there. I think a fuse box and a body control module in that side. Some newer minis, it would be driver side, so right side. But in my car is on that side there, so uh, we're gonna check that. But I thought, first of all, I'm gonna take this apart and check the wirings behind here. Because this car, I don't drive very often, and this problem happened after being sat for a long time. It was probably over a month, sat outside my friend's uh, house. And then one day I picked it up the car, no problem. Then in the, the next, no, in the evening, uh, when I was leaving the garage, when I went to start it, I've noticed the problem. Drove home, which is a, probably about 10 minutes drive, got home, the same thing. You wouldn't lock the car, you wouldn't, central locking wouldn't work. A couple hours later, I came back to the car open the car, put the ignition on, everything was working perfectly. So I know obviously owning the car, I don't think it's gonna be a module problem or a cluster problem, it's, uh, you know, I, I because it worked that second time, I think it's going to be a wiring issue or plug issue, corrosion. Um, I can't activate the alarm on it. You have this, you know the stoke here. There's a light for for the alarm, which when you when you lock the car, it arms the the alarm and that flashes. But I can't get that to work at the minute. So anyway, uh, plan of attack: remove the cluster. See what we find. All right, so I don't know how much you're going to be able to see there, but uh, there's a couple twenty torque screws here. And one on this side. Now this cover. This front cover I have to remove. Ah, this thing as well. The round cover for the hazard lights and the dash light. So that's pretty straightforward, really. I think you need to press it down. Now we have another four. Torx 20. So pretty much, this problem pretty much happened about over a month ago. So I've been driving the car like this. Super annoying. Can't wait to get this sorted out. Right. Yeah, so we have a couple connectors here. I didn't know the setup here, but the back of the cluster or the main, the main panel here, instrument cluster, 
two connectors this is the main one here that one goes to the second information display class slash cluster so I just wanna you can see the back of the metal here it's a little bit corroded so I just wanna see you know if there's any any problem here I'll put you guys down Oh, nice and clean, first one. Second one. It's nice and clean as well. I don't know if you can see it there, but super, super clean. No corrosion whatsoever. I was hoping to see something here. All right, so we have six wires on the wire diagram here. So yeah, you got con line, which is the twisted wire there. So it's very easy to identify it. And then the other ones. It's a bummer really. It's more than six wires there as well. So what I'm going to, to do, obviously you can't get access to the you know the pins at the back here to back probe it. So I'm gonna remove this cover. Which seems like you pulled this tab. There we go. So that's off. I'm gonna reconnect it. Let me connect this one as well. I want that locked. There we go. Open. I'm gonna connect this one back in. And then try not to damage the pins and connect this one back in. Right, I think it's connected. <sighs> yeah. It's connected back in. You can see those two you know, the fuel gauge, temperature gauge goes <laughs> and then it stabilizes again. I don't think it used to do it before. All right, so test light connected to power. There is a pin one, which is brown and black. And I don't know if you can see the test light. So if I can probe at the back here. Oh, there you go. Can't see the there you go. So good ground. Don't think, you know, thinking about it, don't think having a, I uh, didn't think we were going to have a bad ground because otherwise I don't think other more, more functions, well, I don't think the cluster would turn even on without ground. So I'm gonna get the other ground from here, from this bracket. So this light was connected to power. Now I'm gonna connect to ground, which I'm gonna use. That's not very good. This clump here is a bit knackered. Can I connect it here? Well, I think it should be alright there. Right now, ping 15, ping 16, so it's a yellow and red on that side, and brown, green, and blue. So it's those two back one, 15 and 16. Connect it to ground. Yellow and red, nothing. Have a good is the test light connected nicely? Put the ignition on. Oh yeah. So that's 16. We've got good power there. Now this other one. Yellow and red, nothing. Because if I've got good connection, yeah, got power there, which is spin, spin 16, and then 15, I've got power missing there. Right. Well, that's a good start. Right, so no pin 16 is a good power. 
I'm curious to know what sort of voltage we have here. So 1174 volts. And then B16. Pretty much enough for 50 millivolts. Yeah, so that's not good. 1174, I don't know if it's battery voltage there. Pretty much nothing here, so let's trace the. Obviously, we can check the fuse now, which I think is down there. And then, obviously, there's a common connector that I'm gonna check this X15. Uh, yeah, let's see what we find. All right, so just to recap, we are chasing being 15 wire yellow and red. And it's fuse 21, 10 amp fuse. Test light connected to, to ground. You have a diagram here, but he's actually, oh yeah, F21, look at that. Cluster. And on this fuse box is well, it's nicely, you got in between the fuses, you've got all the numbers there. So fuse 21 is this red one here, 10 amp, nice and bright. The other side, good power, so no issue there. So we have a problem with the wiring. We have a problem with the wiring, a broken wire, corrosion. So I'm going to take all this panel off now. Uh, and chase it really, but there's a you know that X5 connector there. I'm, I'm kind of wary about that one, right? So, panel removed. I had to remove this metal bar here for the seat belt to get that our uh, cover off. And this connector that we have is apparently it's 42 pin connector, so this one has got to be first of all. To be honest, it's nice and dry here. Don't see any any corrosion or anything. All right, so that's this plug. I'm interested in this guy here. No, oh, I've got the ignition on. I've got the ignition on. The cluster went out. So I think we're on the right track. Uh, now, how are we going to remove that? There's a bolt in a way. I think we're going to have to pull that out. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not quite sure we're going to have to do that because unless I can pull the plug itself. I can pull to the side here to remove it, I think. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> right, I do find I can see some corrosion. Let's see if you guys can see that. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe we are in the right track. There's a bunch of corrosion inside the plug as well. Inside the plug itself is greenies. Right, let's see if I can show you. I think it's too close for the camera, but. See there, inside the plug. It's going to be a bit of a pain to clean that, but at least we're on the right track, isn't it? And if we can see, I'm going to remove this cover as well. If there's a yellow and red wire, which is there, and removing this plug, the cluster went out. Uh, I've got ignition on and everything. Yeah, let me remove this cover. And then we can see for those, there's about six, eight connectors there that, or pins that are totally covered in rust, corrosion.
Okay, so plug removed. Uh, it was just removing this thing here, uh, which locks in place, and then you just push at the end there, it comes out. It was just stuck with corrosion, basically. So I've got to clean that, and surprise, surprise, our yellow and red right here. If you look at the pin, is the worst one that we have there. Totally sort of blocked. So it's really, really, really bad. I don't know if we're gonna have too deep in it. I'm gonna try to use some um, electrical cleaner first, try to brush as much corrosion as we can off. All right, so I've got battery disconnected. I've got the other cable removed from the, the body there. As you can see, I'm gonna use some so this WD cleaner here, then a brush. Let's see what we can do. Clean a little bit. Actually, <laughs> that pin is missing. That pin is not there anymore. That's why that pin is totally corroded off. Didn't see that. That's why we don't have any power. The actual P itself corroded off. It must be inside here. I'm gonna deep. Yeah, it's there. It's there. I was looking at it. Is that corrosion or something there? But yeah. Yeah, it's the pin is actually inside there. That's why it's not working. Or oh, broke off now, I'm not sure. One of the two. So yellow, yellow and red. It's gonna be this guy here. Yellow, red, and if we press it here, it should pop out, I think. Yep. Ah, there you go. Lovely. Yeah, so you can see, I don't know if you can see where the pins right there. I don't know if I can put it out. I can open it. Because I'm not gonna reuse this anymore. I think I'm just gonna hardwire. That's the only solution that I can see with, you know, at this point. There you go. There you go. So that's broke off. And I think that, that was the main problem. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this. Inside that looks quite good. Apart from the missing pin, I don't know. Let's see if I can show you there. Yeah. See? <laughs> so just gonna clean a little bit more. I'm gonna remove the wire there again, or cut the wire and just connect it, you know, hard wire here and then it should be good to go.
right, final result. So, uh, if you can see well, it's nice and clean. Still a little bit there, but uh, it's pretty much done, really. And the other side, nice and clean as well. And obviously I joined the two wires there. All right, gonna connect it up. Connect the battery again and see if we got a fix. We're gonna tighten up here. Ooh, is it working? Turn this light off. Condition on. Oh, <laughs> yes. So we've got uh, temperature that now. It was flashing, now 14. So I couldn't get the focus to work. So there we go. We've got power that now. Let's see if, uh, there we go. So we've got dash lights. Lovely. Let's start the car. Well, it's still got the airbag lights on. But I think I think I need to clear the faults, hopefully. But yeah. Let's see if the central locking will work. Let's close that door. Yeah, that. That noise, and you didn't have that before. Close it. Right, so let's see if the car is going to lock itself now. Yeah. Whoa. Even the window goes up. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Let's see if the winds go down the other way. No, it doesn't. All right, so the car is locking. Oh, there you go. It's flashing now. It stopped because I put the key in. Open the windows. So I think it fixed everything. So you can see that door is unlocked. Let me lock it now. There we go. Also the alarm is flashing out. Not that you can see. Oh, there you go. So the alarm is activated now. Well, I'm sure everything is working out. Even the gauge there, it doesn't flick anymore. It goes up straight away. Before it was just <laughs> flicking a little bit. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna chase this uh, airbag light later. I think just clearing the photo, we sort that out. But that's it guys, just corrosion on that plug or the pins totally broke off. Um, fix everything that I, that I can see off. I need to see obviously if you're driving, if the mile is gonna count, it's not gonna reset by itself. But I think it was just a power, power issue. Happy with it. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Let's go ahead and scan this car now because I'm kind of curious now because I didn't check any any faults before. I was so confident we'd find corrosion behind the cluster that I didn't even <laughs> scan the car. That, that's to show sometimes you have to I'll turn the ignition off, 10 seconds. That's to show sometimes, you know, if you think you uh, go in one direction and we start checking, so you got everything to put it back in there 10 seconds probably go now yeah before you actually check is all speculation and guess really Scan all modules, let's see the report. 
ABS, DSC, can connect to string cluster. So there you go. There's a current connection instrument cluster, MRSI for airbag motor restraint. Those ones doesn't give me any status. Passenger airbag stage one, front passenger airbag stage two, right front side airbag. Could all be because the, the cluster itself can be. Combas, no message, one from Combi 2, which I guess is the instrument cluster number 2. Uh, voltage. The other one's GM. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I do a quick erase here. Let's see if uh, you know, all the lights are coming on there. Uh, let's see if that's going to fix our airbag light. It doesn't seem like it did. Let's go to motor restraint again. Read codes. I was expecting that light to go. Right front side airbag. Ooh, we might have to look at that. Look at that in another video, I guess. Right front side airbag. Well, we might, it looks like we have a problem, yeah. There. Okay, at least we know. Happy with that. I'm not going to look at that today because I've got a car coming in a second. Let me cycle the ignition. Yeah, the airbag light is not going to go, is it? Okay, so it looks like we do have a problem with the airbag, but uh, I'm going to put it all together now. Uh, it seems to be on the right side of it, so I don't know if it's going to be squib or my seat, or seat belt, one of them. I'm going to look at the phone call later on, and uh, I might, might record another video you know, regarding this airbag fault. Alright, cheers!